how did you approach these really complex decisions and situations in a way where you could act on these principles that you have and not find yourself indecision, anxiety, and not being able to work your way through when necessary? Yeah. And they, you know, they say the, the enemy of good is great. And that if you're always trying to get the perfect decision and solution, then you'll, you'll miss all these other opportunities and probably spend uh, the wrong amount of time trying to analyze. I mean, I think data is important. I think you need to have some foundation by which you make those decisions. As you get more experience though, now you're relying on that experience and that, and this, you know, your in intuition that you've developed over time as well. And I think that's why you don't take a, a young supercharged, you know, lieutenant and put them in charge of an aircraft carrier. They just don't have the same experience and arguably you'd, you'd set them up for failure because they don't even have that analytical ability. Um, over time, over, you know, when you learn how to think as a leader, as you spend that time along the way, I think you have to, the data is important. I think you want to make most of your decisions with some kind of data or information that still allows you to be founded, but you also have to trust your instinct. You have to trust your intuition. Um, I think, to be honest, I mean, maybe as, uh, as a pilot, as a helicopter or fighter pilot and with combat missions, I think maybe that gives you a sense of confidence and an ability to know that, you know, you, you face things that are many times much more risky um, and you've just had to rely on intuition and, and training. Um, and that, I think, sometimes gives you the ability to then, you know, when you're in those decisions, those bigger decisions that affect a large organization, make the right call. I mean, I find it even now, like I'm we're faced with decisions as an organization and, and we're just totally overanalyzing. it. In my mind, I'm thinking, you know, no one's going to die from this. If we get this wrong or no one's going to care if we pick the wrong menu item for Sunday bunch brunches or something. Um, so in those cases, you know, I, it's like, I don't want to spend my time making these kind of decisions. I want to think about the big decisions and I feel comfortable enough to, to be intuitive about what the right things are to do. But, but when you get to those, that's where I think the TR decision with COVID was, it was a decision that it was going to impact, um, 5,000 people or more. Um, there was a lot of data, but it wasn't a perfect amount of data. I definitely had to rely on a little bit of intuition and, and the advice of all the team, you know, the team I'd built around me, the docs and the, the analysts. Um, and then you make your best call you can, and you just kind of have to, if there's a chance to make the decision and then adjust fire, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a decision that's reversible, then you can make a decision and you can always go back and so that was a big one. I think in general, though, I mean, oftentimes in society and even in the military, we tend to want to make decisions as if they're all irreversible. And there's a whole theory on type one versus type two decisions. Um, not all decisions are irreversible. Now, if you're in combat dropping a bomb, that becomes pretty irreversible. Uh, once you push, you know, you pickle and you drop the bomb off your airplane um, in most cases. So in general, though, when you're making decisions in staff or you're making decisions on where the ship's going to go, they're, they're not irreversible. You, you have the ability to get a lot of advice, but you also don't need to spend 100% of your time to get that perfect, great solution. It's probably 80% is probably good enough because you want to spend your time on those other irreversible decisions when they come up. Um, and that is a tough, I, again, I go back to what we said at the beginning. I mean, we're, we're overwhelmed with information these days. We have so many analytical tools and, and database managers and stuff and and it becomes hard. If you're trying to always make that perfect decision, you might never make a decision. Uh, or when you finally do, you've ignored three or four other things that needed your attention. Uh, and as a leader, we vote with our time. And I think you have to know how to prioritize. So when you're, you know, use the data that's available, use the intuition you have, seek advice and counsel. Um, but again, this is where, I mean, the decision making as a leader is one of the most important things you do. You know, you, you make decisions and how you do that relies on all the things we've talked about today, trust, relationships, feedback, data, you know, your core moral principles. Um, and ideally, you know, you get it right. You won't always get it right. But, you know, I think if you understand how to prioritize and you understand what it takes to make a decision, you'll, you'll do okay. Mm -hmm.